Hello and welcome. You're watching India Today at 9 p.m. I'm Akshita Nandagopal. We're kick-starting the bulletin with some big breaking news coming in. Now, the intricate web of corruption that's been stitched by middlemen between the MOD officials and Finn Mechanica has been exposed by a series of audio tapes that's now been accessed by India Today. The tapes which are currently in the investing agency's possession details how Hashke as well as Guruso the key middlemen in the 3,600 crore scam managed to send crores to Indian officials in exchange information from the ministry. India today has accessed this particular phone conversation between two middlemen of the Augusta Westland deal, elaborately discussing, in fact, how they covered their trail of corruption. Now, this is one conversation that India today has accessed. Now, in another conversation, Hashke and Gerosa discuss the fallout of the probe that we're looking into in the Augusta Westland deal and how their interests will remain intact because of the trove of information they hold. This is the conversation that we've got a transcript of. You can see, of course, we're putting out those details on air where you can see Gerosa going ahead and questioning, asking what happens if our dealings are probed and in reply to that Hashke says and I quote don't worry we've built a maze of companies to route bribes to India that nobody will be caught he also goes on to say even if officials find the companies it will take agencies 10 years to reach Mauritius now to this uh, Carlo Garosa goes ahead and asks what about the documents shared Hashke replies, and I quote here, documents related to our dealing with Augusta Westland have dispersed from the Lugano office in Switzerland. They are safe in my mother's house. Garosa says, and I quote, okay, get me the rest of them and I will hide them in my wardrobe. So this is one set uh, of a transcript of a conversation that we've managed to access between Carlo Garosa as well as Hashke. This is the second tape now that we've accessed, the second transcript where once again there's a conversation that plays out between the two. Garosa asks here, and I quote, no, merely for argument's sake, but I don't think they will stop paying completely now. Hashke replies, no, I don't think so. Now, Gerosa says, and I quote here, it would be an admission of guilt. To which Hashke replies, not only would it be an admission of guilt, but it would also make us rebel. So at that point, we would have no need to keep our mouths shut. Now, the third tape that we have accessed is a conversation between Gautam Khetan, who is a Delhi-based lawyer who's been convicted, remember, in the VVIP chopper scam. In this conversation, he goes ahead and asks Hashke, I'm afraid the probe is moving very fast. Now, Hashke in reply says, and I quote here, don't worry, I've cleaned my computer and made all documents and emails disappear. There are no bank accounts directly connected to us in the country. Ketan then questions, how do we proceed now? Now, Hashke replies to that, and I quote here, the lawyer told me not to stop going to the Augusta Westland, to just keep going on with business as usual, as if nothing ever happened, or it will look suspicious. He also goes on to say, and I quote here, why have you stopped? And this is also the reason they will continue making all payments, etc. Business as usual, nothing and everything stays perfectly clean so these are the three transcripts that we've managed to access now to break this really down for us joining us in our studios is uh, mr sanjay brother mr brother what really do you make out of this from what we have the details that we do have these three particular transcripts from the viewpoint of the investigating officials really how important are these details basically the uh, enforcement directorate they are trying to uh, uh, come to the end of the money trail where mm. was money how money was routed where did this money reach which unfortunately they are not in fact these transcripts are recorded in march 2012 by the italian investigative mm. agencies now they have been shared by uh, them to uh, with ed enforcement okay. directorate and in these conversations there was a sense among these middlemen that the probe is catching up with them 
Hmm. So they were worried. Yes. At one point, they uh, Hashke has been seen consoling both Gautam, and hmm. he's been seen uh, 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 consoling well. uh, Garosa as well. That I have cleaned everything, hmm. documents from uh, the Switzerland office. I have uh, make them disappear. They are in, at my mom's house, yes. and rest of uh, the documents I'll uh, give you. And they will take at least 10 years the, hmm. uh, to uh, to catch the root of uh, of the money routed from and where know, it started you know, from taking Mauritius. That, taking that point forward, let's also get in a word from a managing editor of TV Today Network, Rahul Kamal, who's joining us over the phone lines. Rahul, as we were speaking with Mr. Pragda as well, it's a web of corruption that we're really talking about and that's been exposed by these transcripts. You can hear Hashke, of course, speaking about Mauritius, speaking about how that money is being routed to India and how he believes that they'll get away with it. You know, the fact that these transcripts existed has been known for many days now. But this is for the first time that India today has been able to access the actual intercepts that the Enforcement Directorate has access to. These are the key middlemen involved in the Augusta Western corruption. And what is very, very clear, this is the first time that anyone seeing this on TV or in the news. And what emerges is that these middlemen have a very poor opinion of India's investigating agencies. They are so confident that it will take 10 years for the Indian investigative agencies to reach Mauritius where they've been able to wish the money trail away. What is also very, very clear is that Indian officials were indeed paid off. So far, we've seen denials. Denials from Gautam Khaidan, we've seen denials from the Tiagi brothers, we've seen denials from everyone in government at that time. What is also known to us now is that Italian prosecutors are willing to send Hashke and Gerosa uh, to India or they will allow the Indian prosecuting agencies to interrogate them immediately. Now, that is very significant. What is very clear from these conversations is money was paid. What mm. isn't known just yet, who was this money paid to, how much money was paid to them. But these conversations are very damning because they reveal very clearly that here are two middlemen who know that they've committed a crime. They're trying their best to hide their tracks. They're trying their best to make the documents disappear. They're quite confident that Indian investigative agencies are lax, and that is a reality, unfortunately. From the time the Bofors gun scandal broke in the 80s, India hasn't been able to secure a conviction of a single person in any armed corruption-related case. Now, this is a big challenge for the Modi government, for the enforcement directorate, and for the CBI. Will they be able to catch the people who are responsible for this corruption? Not just make noise when it comes to targeting the Gandhi family and the Congress, but actually establish a money trade. The ED says they have been able to establish the money trail. It needs to be proven in a court of law, though. Right. Rahul, also, besides that, of course, what it also exposes is how deep-rooted this particular corruption also was in this particular scam, when we look at it, from based uh, ex exactly on what Hashke has said here. He refers to Mauritius. He refers to wiping out all the data that he has on his computer of hiding several files. It also speaks of how deep-rooted they actually managed to get down to the system. Oh, absolutely. The fact that they've penetrated the system very deep is very clear from these conversations. The fact that there were officials at high-ranking places in the Ministry of Defense and in the uh, Air Force headquarters who were giving them information, that again seems very clear. Apart from everything that's happened in the Italian courts, the conviction which uh, the prosecutors have been able to secure, I think these telephone conversations that Sanjay Brakta and his team of reporters have been working on are very, very significant because they actually show an admission of guilt. Because here you have a telephone conversation where they've admitted that they are destroying evidence, that they're hiding uh, information, that they've hidden it at their mother's house. Now, mm -hmm. All of this shows that they're that they accepting that there is guilt. Now all you have to do is join the dots together, find out who did this money go to, and not just in terms of an acquisition, but in terms of concrete document-based evidence which tracks the money trade. Right. Rahul, Sanjay, would you agree with what Rahul had to say that primarily what this also shows is the weakness of our investigating agencies in going ahead and nabbing this kind of deep-rooted corruption and nabbing the culprits out there. The kind of confidence that you see, you know, in this particular transcript alone that Hashke goes ahead and says that there is no way they'll get to us. It'll take them years for them to actually get down to the root of it. Does it really expose how weak our investigating agencies are? That's true for an extent, but not completely, because they were very smart. These Hashke and uh, 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 Garosa and mm. Gautam, they f uh, formed many companies uh, on the name of servicing, on the name of engineering, on the name of training, which yes. is must for these kinds of dealings. And 70 million euros were, uh, 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 were the fees for the consultancy. They were supposed to be uh, given to them, which 
um, fortunately they, uh, most of mm -hmm. it was given to them out of 70 million only 30 percent was the actual cost of what they were doing mm -hmm. rest of the money was kickbacks so they were uh, routed through many companies through Mauritius route and finally they were uh, the only company in India which is called Aerometrics was the frontal organization mm. for providing service and rest of the 52 millions were routed through different countries. So it's very difficult for any organization to in, in, in that too not only in India but in Italy in uh, tax yes. havens. Yes. Uh, and Mauritius. So it's very difficult task for Indian agencies. Mm. Uh, and you know when we them. speak about that also uh, we only recently came it came to light that with regards to the accused middleman of course Michel Christian and how he had a firm which apparently sold uh, a Punjabi music series and that has now turned out to be a bogus firm. That is something that the ED also has a nerd. Let's also get in a word from Arthur Khan here who's been closely tracking this particular story. Arthur the question that I'd started off with the significance of these particular tapes for the investigating agencies? Well, absolutely. You see, these uh, tapes uh, are uh, of conversation which has happened after the Italian agencies had started, you know, openly investigating the case. And both, all three, uh, HK, Garosa, and Gotham, were aware that they were under the scanner. Uh, but as Rahul pointed out, you know, they were as if having a laugh at the agencies because they had created such an intricate web of, uh, you know, sort of companies through which the payment was rooted that it, uh, they, they knew very well that it will take at least 10 years for the investigative agencies uh, to, to, you know, understand the entire implications and that's what actually happened. Uh, so these tapes are absolutely crucial because they give us an idea of what they were thinking. All three of them were quite confident and they were aware that what they have to do in order to ensure that uh, you know uh, they are not caught you know that the actions are normal and that's what uh, is reflected in the conversation between uh, all three of them uh, there's another angle to this uh, uh, um, you know entire episode they were so well entrenched uh, his, their other associate uh, uh, christian uh, michel who was uh, you know hand in glove with the mod officials and yes. in fact he had uh, you know, made, made a frontal company, a bogus company uh, to oblige them in different ways. Right, right, uh, uh, Arthur. Uh, do we? Uh, uh, let me also go across to Rahul Kamal, who has been with us on this broadcast. Rahul, earlier in the day, we had also exposed a Binami firm, a shell firm of uh, Christian Michel, where he supposedly sold Punjabi music series. It was, of course, a front to go ahead and give world travel air tickets for several MOD officials as well. And that clearly is just the tip of the iceberg. There are many such firms involved. It was an international network of sorts. So, realistically speaking, using this particular transcript. Using what we know about Christian Michel, how can we expect our agencies to get down really to the root of this corruption? You know, this is the second very, very significant news break, this time by our colleague Atir Khan, uh, who's been able to get from the enforcement directorate details about this company, uh, which used to essentially fund travel for Ministry of Defense officials. And it, the, the pretext was that they're selling Punjabi music CDs, which were actually never sold. So they were using the air travel agency to give away free tickets. Several MOD officials were given these tickets. Uh, and in turn, they gave inside information about the going-ons in the Ministry of Defense, the specific information relating to uh, the VVIP chopper scandal. They also seem to have received money. Now, who are these officials? That's something the ED says that they're going after. But this whole company, and this was set up by Christian Mikkel. He's the absconding uh, middleman. He's supposed to be in Dubai. He's a British national. But mm. that is the company that you need to really look at very, very carefully because this is a company which was essentially up front for bogus Punjabi music, music cities. And it's done very smartly. So you, you know, set up this front. You spend a certain amount of money. You convey the impression that this is for the export of Punjabi music, but actually there's no music being exported. This Absolutely. is a very significant lead that the ED has been able to put together, and that's the story that our colleague Arthur has just broken this evening. Yes, Rahul, and as you pointed out, of course, considering that Arthur has filed the story, uh, Arthur, if you could sum up really what really was as the ED come down to, we understand, as uh, uh, Rahul has pointed out, that this particular uh, farce of selling Punjab musical music series was clearly a front to go ahead with their corrupt activities. They were using that as a front to give air travel tickets to several MOD officials and hence getting inside information from the ministry. Well, that's right. You know, it was a frontal company basically to set up their shop in India. 
they needed to have a company which could be used to do the fund. And uh, for that purpose, this company was floated uh, as a frontal company, which was, uh, you know, in the name of uh, uh, MS uh, uh, Media. You know, it, 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 the name of the company was MS uh, Messrs. Media Intent Limited. The purpose, you know, which was showed was that it will export music series from India. But when the uh, ED officials looked into it, and, uh, you know, they, they went deep into the investigation, they discovered none, not a single CD was exported. So then they started looking at what the purpose of the company was. Hmm. They picked up his driver. They also, uh, you know, questioned one of his associates called R.K. Nanda. And it was then that they discovered that, uh, you know, this company was actually, through its travel agency, you know, giving the obliging MOD officials, giving, out, giving them free tickets so that they get as a quid pro quo. Uh, information, uh, inside information, privileged information from the Ministry of Defense in connection with the August Service Land Deal. Right. Uh, Athir, stay on with us. In fact, all these revelations, Sanjay, I don't know if you'd agree with me, throw up more questions than really answers. You wonder how deep-rooted this corruption is, what really the web entails, how many countries were involved, what are the kind of firms we're looking at. But in that second transcript that we did manage to access, you can see Hashko and uh, Gerosa getting into a conversation about turning rebel, about the kind of information they have and hence why they play such a vital link and why no one can afford to really uh, e expose them per se. Do you think they're really referring to possibly the higher echelons of uh, the government then? Were they referring to the fact that there would be a certain fear among those people to expose these middlemen? No, more than that, I think they were referring to Augusta West land okay. because uh, they are talking about how attorneys of the company are pursuing uh, and what, uh, uh, what, uh, what are they saying about who were behind the deal and who were the agents where was this this money uh, consultancy fees given mm. so of course they are talking about those people who uh, who were in the know how of and who made this happen reduced the uh, flying height from 6000 to mm. 4500 feet obviously he's been named in the ed uh, charge sheet and investigation but they the reference in these conversations is most towards augusta West, westland because okay. investigation was initially started by the italian government all right. All right. Sanjay, thanks for joining us with those details. Thanks to Rahul Kamal as well as Arthur Khan for joining us with those details. Explosive details out there from those transcripts that India Today has accessed of conversations between middlemen Hashke uh, Gerasu as well as uh, uh, Khaitan who was present there who has been convicted as well in the VVIP choppers camp. We'll continue getting you more details on this story. But time now for us to slip into a short break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.